If you type into Google what breaks a fast, then you're gonna get a lot of different answers to it. Can I drink coffee while fasting? Will lemon water kick me out of a fasted state? What about bulletproof coffee and fasting? What about artificial sweeteners? Will I still be fasting if I have like 50 calories of Snickers bars? Can I have that Milky Way? No. Those are all great questions and the answers to those are also quite complicated. Some people may give you different answers depending on what they think it means to be in a fasted state. There are different reasons for doing intermittent fasting and it has many purposes. So what counts as breaking a fast depends on what you're fasting for and what you're hoping to gain from it. In this video, I'm going to tell you what counts as breaking a fast. I'd be pretty bummed if I don't at least get a bite of the Milky Way. Oh. Fasting is great for fat loss, reducing inflammation, promoting longevity, strengthening the immune system, and it can also boost muscle growth. The biggest benefits of fasting come mostly from three things. Autophagy which is the cell's self-digestive mechanism that recycles waste material and old proteins into energy. This greatly improves your health and longevity. The second thing is ketosis, the metabolic state with elevated level of ketone bodies in the bloodstream. This makes you burn primarily fat for fuel from your own adipose tissue. Ketones are a much better source of energy for the brain because they cause less oxidative stress to the mitochondria and they last for a longer period of time. The third and final benefit is hormesis, the body's adaptive mechanism to mild stress. This will trigger protective metabolic pathways such as AMPK that increase mitochondrial density and boost the immune system. Hormetic stressors in the right dose will make the organism stronger than it was before. Fasting promotes all of these three things to a different degree depending on how long you've been fasting for. The key trigger to all of them is energy deficit and glycogen depletion. Fasting ketosis can happen as soon as your liver glycogen stores have been depleted and your liver starts producing ketone bodies. It takes about 16 to 20 hours for your liver glycogen to be emptied out but there are other factors to be considered if you really want to dig deep into a fasted state. Autophagy requires the inhibition of mTOR, which is the body's most anabolic metabolic pathway that makes your cells grow. AMPK supports autophagy because of the energy deprived state. Mild autophagy can occur as soon as you suppress mTOR by keeping insulin and blood sugar very low. However, for the cells to really start cleaning out the house, you need to be fasting for at least 24 to 48 hours to trigger any significant response. AMPK gets triggered when your body needs to generate energy in a fuel deprived state. Fasting and glycogen depletion put you into a caloric deficit which then ramps up your body's adaptation mechanisms. Inducing a demand for calories through exercise or the cold can also upregulate AMPK and mitochondrial biogenesis. So. Let's now go through all of these physiological processes and see what inhibits them or what breaks a fasted state. Let's start off with autophagy. The main inhibitor of autophagy is mTOR. mTOR responds to the amount of nutrients in cells and it turns off autophagy when there are plenty of nutrients around. Autophagy and mTOR are basically the polar opposites to each other, anabolism and catabolism. mTOR is very sensitive and it gets raised the most by carbohydrates and protein. Eating just 50 calories or even as little as 2 to 3 grams of leucine can cause this small anabolic response that shifts you from a fasted state into a fed one. BCAAs are also very nutrient rich and they will most likely elevate mTOR and stop autophagy. Autophagy can make you break down old worn out proteins into energy but in general muscle breakdown gets greatly reduced in a state of fasting ketosis. We know that carbs and protein raise insulin and they will elevate mTOR as well, which will then inhibit autophagy, but what about fat? Fat doesn't raise insulin and it keeps mTOR suppressed in small amounts. Endogenous ketone bodies from your own body fat will stimulate autophagy, which can promote brain macroautophagy as well. So you would think that fat is okay, however, if there's plenty of energy circulating around in the body, then that's a signal that there is enough energy around and that's a signal to raise mTOR and suppress autophagy. Exogenous ketones can also be insulinogenic. What? 
in a study done on rats, they found that exogenous ketones promote insulin secretion when blood glucose was greater than 5.0 millimoles or 90 milligrams per deciliter. If you're a healthy person with very low levels of body fat, then your blood glucose will probably be lower than that, and your insulin sensitivity will also be higher. If, however, you have extra body fat and you're overweight, then that's a sign that there's plenty of energy already stored in your adipose tissue. Your body fat is fuel, it's energy, and that's also a sign that there's plenty of energy to be around. This is definitely not something that you can take my word on, because, you know, there's different degrees of mTOR, there's different degrees of insulin sensitivity, and there's different degrees of keto adaptation. But if you want to be completely safe, then I would avoid all calories, whether that be from fat, bulletproof coffee, or exogenous ketones. If you're fasting for autophagy, it also means that you shouldn't have these kinds of small snacks even. You know, maybe like a piece of almond. Free almond. Okay, probably one single almond won't kick you out of a fast state. But yeah, you should still be careful with this. What in the fuck is almond milk? You'll be better off by skipping all calories altogether. Absolutely nothing. However, there are some foods that actually boost autophagy and that you can use while fasting. Green tea has polyphenols and other ingredients like EGCG that stimulate autophagy. Coconut oil or MCT oil can also stimulate autophagy in very small amounts by raising ketones. However, as we found out, too much fat and too much energy inside the system is still a signal to elevate mTOR and suppress autophagy. I wouldn't be consuming any more than one teaspoon of MCT oil while you're fasting. Ginger's compounds 6 shagol can block mTOR which in turn activates autophagy. Ginseng can also induce autophagy, as does turmeric and curcumin. However, those compounds are fat soluble, which means that you need some fat to absorb them. So, if you combine the ginger and turmeric with that one teaspoon of MCT oil, then you can actually boost autophagy. Galangal is a common name for several Southeast Asian spices, and it's been shown to induce autophagy. Reishi mushroom extracts are shown to increase autophagy and inhibit breast cancer growth. Coffee stimulates lipid metabolism through the autophagy lysosomal pathway in mice. However, excess caffeine consumption may lead to higher blood glucose and insulin levels, which in turn may lead to muscle breakdown and too much stress. I have a video about how to drink coffee optimally without these negative side effects, so check it out. Apple cider vinegar has trace amounts of micronutrients, and it most likely isn't enough to kick you out of a fastest state. It may actually boost autophagy by promoting the cleaning process and ketosis. If you want to be completely safe, then you can just drink water and some salt to balance your electrolytes. There it is! Yes! Yeah! You know, some people say that anything but water will kick you out of a fast state. You can't have coffee, you can't have tea, you... you <laughs> and even sometimes, some people say that you need to be dry fasting to gain even some benefits from it. Even though, let's say, drinking coffee can stimulate your liver's enzymes and shift you from a fasted state into a fed one, will it be a bad thing depends on why you're fasting for. I mean, who cares about those liver enzymes if you're fasting for autophagy and ketosis? But if you could gain more results by boosting your autophagy with coffee, green tea or turmeric, then why the hell wouldn't you take advantage of it? So I definitely would think that using these compounds strategically in some amounts can be very beneficial. That is so good. But what about artificial sweeteners? Artificial sweeteners are even more contradicting because there's a ton of different research about how they damage your microbiome, how they cause brain damage and diabetes. And there's some evidence that shows that they're perfectly fine. A recent review on low calorie sweeteners concluded that they don't seem to have any effects on insulin in vivo. Now I can eat anything! It turns out that zero calorie sweeteners, they're not guaranteed to raise your insulin, but they may. You have to know how your body specifically reacts to these ingredients, how insulin sensitive you are. At the same time, even though artificial sweeteners, they may not spike insulin, they may still inhibit autophagy. There's also some evidence showing that artificial sweeteners, they're very bad for your microbiome, so I would still avoid them completely. And I'm still working on my coke addiction, my, my diet coke addiction, <laughs> that is. You know? What? 
This also brings us back to the question of why you're fasting for. There's a difference between fasting for religious purposes, fasting for fat loss, fasting for longevity, and fasting for simply convenience. They're all great reasons, but what your specific goal is depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Let's say you're fasting for a fat loss, then you simply want to boost ketosis and maybe stimulate some autophagy as well. You just need to maintain a caloric deficit and eat at a certain time frame. But at the same time, I wouldn't try to trick your brain into thinking that bulletproof coffee actually isn't calories. It is creamier and more delicious. That it's just empty calories and it's it's gonna keep you in a fasted state like magic. You're a wizard. If you're already overweight, then you're carrying extra energy with you at all times. You don't need to elevate your ketones even further and you don't need to send another signal to your body that there is energy because it may actually raise mTOR and inhibit autophagy. But to gain the benefits of autophagy, you need to be fasting for at least 24 hours. If you're planning to fast for 16 to 20 hours, then you can use these compounds that I mentioned like green tea, coffee, turmeric and ginger to boost autophagy and gain the benefits of autophagy faster. This will help you to maintain a caloric deficit. This can also help you to clean out your cells and this will definitely save you a lot of time as well. So it's all good. <laughs> As you can see, there are many applications, there are many reasons, and there are many variations of intermittent fasting. It's definitely a very good and healthy habit to have, especially in the modern world. If you're interested in learning more about optimizing autophagy and ketosis with intermittent fasting, then check out my Keto IF program. But other than that, thanks for watching. Click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Like always, my name is Sim. Stay keto adapted, stay empowered.